I am sure sports. You know me there, yeah. I'm coach to coach representing. I mean, I said this is right as representing for all my. You don't know, come get the sports over here from near and far. Boy, 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 boy. Me say, I am sure sports, one thing me sure about When me say sure, that me, me not doubt Come get your sports, get it over here Come subscribe, repost and share I am sure sports, one thing me sure about When me say sure, that me, me not doubt Come get your sports, get it over here Come subscribe, repost and share yeah, If me not sure, that me, me not say it Know who score, that me, me not say it Never know the game play, that me, me not say it If me never seen a game, me not know who play For your sports news, better come over your so For your soccer news, then come over your so If you don't love sports, still come over your Yes, For the day, don't you want to love over your yes, So, so, when it comes on to behavior concerning football, Jamaica is, is decent. I am sure that if we can get all of these things done, set in place by the end of April, it gives us enough time before the World Cup campaign. Not afraid of no Brazil or Argentina with these crapper players. We are good enough. Remember, like, subscribe, 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 share. Listen, comment, let me know what your thoughts are. Greetings, greetings, and welcome to I Am Sure Sports. I'm your host, the Money's Man. We have a big, 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 big one. Yes, a big, big one lined up for you today. So um, come on in. Make sure once you come on, you hit the like button, people. You have to hit the like button. You have to subscribe, and you have to also share the content. Really big one we have lined up for you today. We know that there are many, many sporting events happening right now. And you may be looking at them, but we ask you to come on, take in and take in this video on I Am Sure Sports. Yes, it's going to be epic. It's going to be epic. We'll be having the one and only Dion Burton, the one who came on at the... Uh, the second stage of our 1998 World Cup campaign and just kept on scoring goal after goal after goal, you know, helping to qualify the national team um, for the 1998 World Cup, right? A name that is etched in the heart of every Jamaican. Um, he's going to be with us today. We're going to hear about all his, his, his foot, footballing exploits from um you know before he came to jamaica um representing jamaica and what he's doing now you know we want to find out if he's living somewhere in you know he probably be in hawaii or dubai just relaxing on the oceans there and and, and enjoying his wealth or if he's still engaging football i'm going to bring him on for you in in a little while but we want to big up the sponsors of this video today uh our sponsors are uh, Launch Legacy. Launch Legacy, where you handle risk and seek legacy. You can visit them at launchlegacy.com uh, or call 1647 989 1647 989 0782. If you remember, we interviewed um, Jamaican footballer Patrick Reed. And, and he's a part of that. In fact, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share with you uh, just a video for you can see what Launch Legacy represents. So that's Launch Legacy. They are over there in Canada. If you're a footballer, you need to have, you know, some financial security for your future. They are the people that you want to get in touch with so they can teach you about investment. So just look at this short clip from uh, our sponsors, Launch Legacy. Yes, so Launch Legacy, one of our sponsors for this video today. I'm really glad that they have come on board. Um, you can see their info going there in the banner. We also have Prestige Finance. 
who has come on board to join I Am Sure Sports. And um, you will be hearing from Prestige Finance very soon. Go and check them out. Right, you can you can um, contact Fres Prestige Finance and call them at 876-884-7390. That is Prestige Finance. Yes, go and check them out, people, and give them some support. Let them know that you heard from them um, on I Am Sure Sports. It's where the Prestige Finance lending a hand when you need it the most all right we're just waiting on our guests to 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 be back up and on and in the meantime let me just play for you something from prestige finance There you go. Big thank you to our sponsors, Prestige Finance. People, I can't even wait any longer. We're going to hear from the man himself. Wanted to give him a big, big Jamaican round of applause on social media. I don't know how we do that, but let's welcome Mr. Dion Burton. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, Dion. How are you doing? Good. Not too bad. I'm not too bad. Wonderful. It's 7.30 there now? Yeah, it's the early evening. I've just had dinner. And just come down to speak to you. Okay. Oh, I, I I didn't know that I was going to mess up. You know, we should have waited until you you eat. We know important. You know. That's <laughs> fine. That's... All right. All right. Listen, it's so good to have you. Um, it's been a while. I don't know the last time that you have really spoken, um, to the the Jamaican populace, those who of us who have really fallen in love with you, given your exploit, um, nine from nineteen. And the back end of 1997, all the way into the 2000, when you you you, you represented um, the Jamaica Reggae Boys, a household name um, in, in in local football, though you never played for a local club. But um, just give us a little bit about you know your history. When did you start playing the sport? All the way up to getting. How did you end up in Jamaica with such talent? What happened? I mean, did some wind blow you here? Did you come to a party? Did you come to the beach? How did you get here? I started playing at a young age, probably eight or nine, for my local team, where I was brought up in Reading, little town outside London. And and the journey started there, really. From there, I got spotted by Portsmouth while I was playing for Reading and they uh, scouted me and spoke to my parents, asked me if I, I'd like to go and join them. They were in a couple of leagues above Reading at the time, uh, in the late eighties. Um, and then obviously stayed in Portsmouth, got into the first team under Jim Smith, the late Jim Smith. Um, he, he went on to Derby County and now I followed him there. I followed him there, played in the premiership for six years at Derby. Jim Smith got the sack and went back to Portsmouth as assistant to Harry Redknapp. Um, and how the story goes, they were struggling. They didn't have a striker to start the season. And I wasn't around uh, the Derby starting team for the start of the season in 2002. So I came in from training the day before the start of the uh, campaign, the start of the season. And someone said, oh, Jim Smith's on the phone. He wants to speak to you. So I've come in from a double double session because I wasn't in the squad for the first game of the season for Derby. So I'd done an extra bit of work out on the pitches. Come in and Jim Smith said, Dion, we need you. Come down to Portsmouth. Harry, Harry wants to sign you. Um, if you do well on the loan, we'll probably uh, we'll keep you. So I said, uh, OK, when, when do you want me to come? In a few weeks? Or when he said, I want you to get in the car right now and drive down because you're playing tomorrow. I said, Gaffer, because I always called him Gaffer. I said, Gaffer, I've just done a double session. I don't think I've already Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, son. You'll be all right. We'll, we'll play half a game and then we'll bring you off. But get in your car now and get down because you have to sign before five o'clock. So I was Friday evening traffic from Derby to Portsmouth for about four hours. Uh, got in the car, drove down. Derby said, yeah, they let me go. 
went down, signed probably about nine, ten o'clock Friday evening, and then played first game of the season. The next game against Forest, we ended up winning two nil. I scored the first goal. This is in the championship. In the championship, it's the season yeah. that we got promoted. So, um, played the first game. Uh, at halftime, I come off and said, oh, I'm tired. I, uh, he goes, I'm a, I said, I'm going to come on off now. He said, no, you're doing well, son. Keep going, keep going. So I stayed on, played the whole game. And then the second game of the season was on a Tuesday night, away to, uh, I think, Sheffield United, scored again. And then on the following Saturday, we were back at home against Watford, scored again. And I think I only had one or two games left before the loan was up because it was only a month loan to start. Oh. While, their, while their striker was getting fit because he, he got injured in pre-season. So, uh Come to the fourth game now, uh, and then I broke my fifth metatarsal in my right foot. So, uh, unfortunately, the loan had to come to an end, and I got sent back to Derby. But they kept tabs on me, and they said, look, you've done enough in them few games that once you get back fit, we're going to sign you. So, yeah. it got now to about near Christmas, and I was getting back to fitness, and Lo and behold, my first game back was Derby versus Portsmouth. <laughs> so, uh, Portsmouth obviously were at the top of the league, flying. And I just thought, well, in a few days, hopefully, I'm going to end up going to Portsmouth. So uh, I came on, nearly scored against them. And then two days later, ended up signing for Portsmouth uh, for, on a two-year contract. So that was that. Back to Portsmouth with Harry Redknapp and Jim Smith. We got promoted that season, which was great to the Premier League. Stayed one more season and then my journey continued with other clubs like um, Charlton. I had two years in Azerbaijan with Tony Adams. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What, what, what period of your career was that? That was right near the end. That was right near the end. So uh, I went out there to play uh, with Tony Adams. Uh, two years. Great, great memories out there. Really uh, nice country. And... Uh, Came back, thought I was going to retire. Ended up playing a few more years with Gillingham. Uh, won the league with them. And who else? Schiff, uh, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> Scunthorpe won the league with them in the lower leagues, League Two. But that was I was getting to like 37, 38 then. And I really had to start thinking about what I wanted to do after football. And I know I love football. And I wanted to stay around it. And I had all my coaching badges. So I uh, ended up playing part-time for a local team in the area, but more focusing on coaching. And I went into Birmingham City, started coaching there under 13s. So the coaching was taking priority and the football was, if I was available, I could play on a Saturday. If not, if a coaching was, had coaching, then coaching started to take over from the football Please. side of things. Yeah. Um, I stayed at, I stayed at uh, Birmingham City coaching the young kids for two years before West Bromwich Albion. Uh, approached me and said, look, they'd like me to come in and take their under-13s, but also try and develop all the strikers through the age group. So just a little bit extra Whoa. for what I was doing at Birmingham City, getting me a chance to get around the under-16s, under-18s, under-23s, and just giving back some some of the knowledge that I've had over my career and obviously with my coaching starting, showing them what I used to do and different techniques and styles that maybe they hadn't tried before. So that was a new new thing for me bolting on more time, more hours of coaching. And then uh, at that stage, Darren Moore was taking the 23 at West Bromwich Albion. Big Moro. And first the first team manager got the sack. Darren Moore ended up bumping up to the first team and being manager. And I went from the under-13s and bumped up to the 23s, straight from 13s to 23s. So it was a great big jump for me. Um, but I'd have been dipping in and coaching them like part time anyway, just the strikers. But now it was with the full squad and the full responsibility of coaching the team, which was really good. And I also, on the side of that, I started being the loan manager. So all the players from the 23s that went on loan to different clubs in England, oh, you, abroad, oh, okay. I was the manager of them, making sure that the journey was okay, the club was the right for the player, um, the facilities were right, and just keeping on top of him. Uh, all the players out on loan. We had about 10 players out, out on loan. So most weekends I was up and down England. Sometimes we had players in Scotland. Fly up there to go and see them, give them some feedback. And then obviously you have to feedback everything that I saw 
um, to all the management staff at West Bromwich Albion, because obviously at the end of the day, we are the parent club. So everyone wanted to know what the loan players were up, up to. And then that's where I am now. I had to choose a couple of years ago, the club said the two jobs were getting too big for one person. So I had to choose between either being loan manager or staying with the under 23s. I decided that co the coaching was what I had passionate uh, for the most. So I stepped aside from the loan manager and became just the uh, 23 lead. Uh, that's what I'm still doing now. Okay, so, so so what position are the under twenty three? Because you are you 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 coach the under twenty threes at West yeah. Brom now. Yeah. All right. How are they in the in in, in the under twenty three under twenty threes? So, so we're second. We just played last night against local rivals Aston Villa. It was a top of the table clash. They're third in the league. We were second, uh, and we we uh, beat them two one. So uh, we're tucked just tucked behind uh, Fulham, who are in top. And we're in second place at the moment, so we're doing we're doing well. We've got a young squad of players, trying to develop them. Um, half of them are around the first team. They train with them. I don't really see them during the week. Then up training with the first team. Oh, okay, so, so they just turn up for games with the right. other twenty threes, but they train no. with the first team. They train half the week. They'll be with the, the first team, and then I get them the back end of the week ready to prep for the games for our games, and then. Um, then, then they play for us, but the it, go on. No man, go ahead, go ahead. But the the, but the ones that we're trying to push on, they they kick on them. But then I'll end up bringing up some from the under 18s to train yeah. with me, so then they develop quicker as well. So there's a little little development belt there that we try to push okay. on the, the better players. Awesome. All right. So tell us what what is you, you say you have all your coaching badges. Um, what what level badge do you have now? Is the UEFA Pro? The yeah, UEFA A license. So uh, I just have the Pro license to do, but unless you go into management, you don't really need your Pro license. The A, a, the a license is a, is a top uh, qualification to be able to coach, obviously, uh, at the level I'm at now. So maybe next year I might look to do um, the Pro license as well, but... Maybe. We will see. Okay, so with the pro license, with the A license, you could you could also be involved like in international teams in terms of countries. Maybe youth levels are are you'd have to get the pro license for that. How does it how does it work? No, no, the uh, UEFA A license is uh, suffice and sufficient enough to coach at most levels. And even if I wanted to be a manager in the Premier League, as long as I was on. Or, or um, applied for the pro license, they let you uh, manage in the Premier League anyway. Because there's lots of coaches that have come up, um, like uh, I think it was uh, Frank Lampard hadn't got his pro license and he was managing the Premier League. At so as long as you're looking to uh, apply for it and get on the court, the uh, UEFA A license is fine. Okay. All right, so that's awesome. So you have really made some. You're still involved in football, working out at West Brom. Any young um, player you have out there you're developing that has any connections to Jamaica that we could possibly see? Seeing that you have a relationship with Paul, or you could give them a little nudge and say, "Hey, go try out for the under twenties. Try out for the under 17. Hey, Paul, I have a good one here that you probably could take a look at for the national team. Anyone there in that you know kind yeah. of zone that you have eyes on? We have uh, we have many talented young players, and uh, yeah, there's a few with Jamaica heritage and background. And I know uh, I talk to Paul regularly, and Paul knows the situation with which players uh, qualify to play for Jamaica. So we're keeping we're keeping on the the, the foot on the pedal and trying to convince the players to uh, go down the path that we did and uh, choose Jamaica over any other choice that they may have. Yeah, but how there's a difficult. Lot of at the moment. Yeah, how difficult is it? To, to convince, you know, a, a child at a, a at a young age to make that kind of a move, um, especially, you know, probably have not been in Jamaica, they just connected through um, grandparents and stuff. Is it a difficult thing or um, they are so already in love with Jamaica that the fact that they see it as an option now, they, would, they just need a little bit of prompt, prompting to kind of do it or... It, it's hard convincing them. How do you find it? Yeah, yeah. With most, 
what you'd find, obviously, every 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 Jamaican uh, player or person of Jamaica heritage, just because we, the only thing that we're missing is the sun. We still eat, <laughs> we still have the same food, we still start the, the same. Really? Lady. So, so we're, we're only missing the sun. So, and most of us would always go back and and see family in Jamaica most uh, times when we have breaks and. Um, and we have the football season finishes. We head over to Jamaica. Most players would have holidays in Jamaica or have family in Jamaica. So the the, the roots are firmly firmly there. So yeah, that's awesome. And that's awesome because I think sometimes when for those of us who are here in Jamaica, there is a feeling like the the persons in England don't even know the culture. So it's good that you share that that. You eat the same food, speak the same language, listen to the same music, and the only thing you're really missing is 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 the sun. And that's important for us to know that you you really, though you're not here, you, you the, the culture is still a part of you, and that's what of I'm course. getting. Yeah. I can't speak. I can't speak for every uh, overseas player, but the, for the majority, I can definitely say that uh, yeah, that's that's the case. Okay. You know that many people have you as the the, the best forward that Jamaica <laughs> have had. Uh, just because you were so instrumental, they call you Dion Wanna 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 Game Burton. Because okay. um, <laughs> during that World Cup campaign, you were scoring like I think you scored in the Canada game, you scored in the USA game, you scored it you scored a looping header. Was it in El Salvador? That's correct, yeah. The, the looping header that the ball they said it 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 went out and came back in i don't know <laughs> oh, i don't know how that happened i don't know how that happened <laughs> right um uh, i think the mexico game it didn't score because that ended in a in a nil nil um scoreline and you were substituted i think robbie earl came on for you um late in the game so when you actually qualified you were actually on the bench when the mm -hmm. game ended but you're still a part of the exit. But what was that like for you? Just being so prolific and just goal after goal after goal. Tell us yeah, about that. Truly, truly, truly blessed. And uh, and I had lots of people behind me, uh, me to do well, and obviously to help me achieve what what we set out to do as being part of the uh, team to qualify for the 98 World Cup. And just lucky enough to have a great team, a great team around me to help me score the goals. The likes of, obviously, Paul Hall, Fitzroy Simpson, Gardiner, uh, Tapa Whitmore, obviously, Ian Nisson, uh Nandy Lowe, Shorty Malcolm, Peter Cargo, I could name it, all of them, Rudy Dixon. Everyone, but um, yeah, it's a good time, good, 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 good memories, and just hope one day soon that the current squad can do the same because there's no better feeling than that feeling that I had when we qualified for the '98 World Cup. Yeah, you you say that in terms of your footballing career, that has been your yeah. biggest accomplishment thus far. It, it has it has to be it, it has to be anytime we have a we have a little joke when we're talking about football all the time and then anytime you anytime you're having a battle talking about football the kid when you say that oh but by the way i played in this thing called uh, the Copa mondial and uh it's called the world cup you might know it's the world cup yes the, the conversation is over so anyone that can say that they played and scored this many goals in the premier league and this and this and that but if you haven't played in the World Cup, have you really reached the pinnacle of what every player desires to do? And that is to play at the highest stage, and that is the World Cup. Yeah. All right. I see I see former national player Dean Sewell here. I'm going to take some of the comments. Dean Sewell, I'm um, talking about Freddie Butler. He says, Freddie Butler, only bad word. The man costs up. I don't know. There, there, there seems to be something with you guys. I don't know. I don't know what that's about. But Dean Sewell would know, and Freddie would know, and you would know, right? Sewell, yes, I know Dean. Yes, I like to say that. if he's listening. Yes, Dean. I spoke. It's funny just to say that I spoke to Freddie Butler uh, only a few a few days ago, and we were talking about hopefully linking up soon in the in America. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing a good job out there. So many of you guys are involved in coaching, but Dean, but let's go back to like the beginning. What happened? How did you end up in Jamaica? In, in, because you were at 18 years old, 18, 19? When, when yeah, you came... uh, nine, 1920, I think. And I, I, I tell the story. I don't know if you've heard it, but it was it to start with, it was by chance, but everything happens for a reason. So maybe it wasn't by chance that Paul Hall and Fitzroy Simpson were going on trial for the national team and invited me to come along just to train, just to keep fit. And obviously, I looked at it as a free holiday to Jamaica. So I thought, why, well, why not? So I come out and I remember... So you uh, bought your own ticket? Did you, did you buy your own ticket? Yeah, we bought our own ticket. bought our own tickets to fly to Jamaica. We stayed there. Oh. Uh, uh, what garden was it? I can't remember the hotel there in Kingston. Um, and I think on the first day they were going training. I said, you know what, guys, I think I might just stay by the pool and you go and go and do your thing and go and try out for the, the national team and all the best. And they were like, no, Dion, you're coming, you're coming, you're gonna come and train with us. So I went down to the national stadium, uh, and obviously had a little back back step behind the, the two boys that were going to trial, and they are obviously asked. Rene Samos, who was the coach at the time, look, we've just brought our, our teammate, young Dion Burton, with us. Is it OK if he joins in uh, and um, takes part? And then Rene was, yeah, of course, he can he, he can join in, not a problem. Um, and as the week went by, I think Rene quickly whispered in uh, Fitz's ear, is that young kid uh, have any Jamaican in him? <laughs> 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 and funny enough, uh, yeah, I, I have actually fifty percent. So the rest <laughs> still invited back to be part of the national team. And uh, the next time we flew out, we didn't have to pay for the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so did you know before you got to Jamaica that you had Jamaican connection, or you found that out after you were sort of invited back, or you knew that you had some Jamaican connection? All along. Pardon, say that, say that again. All right. Were you aware that you had Jamaican connections before you came on that little tryout with Fitzroy and Paul? Of course Paul? I did. But that's Jamaican. Oh, you knew? <laughs> of okay. course. All right. I told you I know my heritage. I know, I know where I come from. All right. So where in Jamaica are your family from? So My, my dad was brought up in Kingston's Red Hills uh, of uh, Constant Spring, I think, Avenue. Uh, that's where my Red Hills Road. Red Hills okay. Road, yeah. Constant Spring. And uh, yeah, we have my grandma still there in between there and and and, and uh, the states at the moment, and that's where my dad grew up and lived there to his uh, early teens before moving to England. Okay, so now uh, what a big question I want to ask you about this. So when you, you go back to England and the JFF re-invite you to come and be a part of the team, you're invited in it now officially. Yeah, been trained and impressed, Rene. Yeah, all right. What was the process like? Did you have to get Jamaican citizenship? How, yeah. How, did you have to get a passport? Was that difficult for you? Well, or did someone, the JFF, just do that for you? How did that work? No, but at the time, at the time, I was around the England under 21. Oh. So it was now Fitz and Hawley, they were just going straight out. Yeah, I want to be, I'm in Jamaica. Let's go and sort out what we need to sort out. I had to make a decision. What? I'm around the England 21s. How's the progression? What players around the England setup do I see my pathway going with England? Now I have an opportunity to play for Jamaica and represent Jamaica. Now I have to choose between the two. So we had lengthy discussions. Obviously, Paul and Holy were like, come on, come on, come on. Three of us were going, we're going. This is meant to be. I said, you know what? I wrote to my family, my parents, uh, work colleagues, and the choice, the choice was made. And then we had to talk about go into the London embassy to try and get the passports, which took a long time, lots of queuing. I remember it. I remember it. We really oh, queue up. Uh, hold on, hold on. I said, before you get to the passport, because I want you to tell me about that process, because we are having that issue now, and we don't know why it takes so long. So I'd love for you to share that experience so we can learn how difficult it is to get like the whole passport stuff started out. But what, what was a convincing thing? What convinced you to say, you know what? Was it your family? Was it Paul and Fitzroy? Was it the, the Jeff Rene calling you? Was it your coach who encouraged you and friends? Was it the community? What was 
what convinced you to say, listen, I know I'm around England under 21, but Jamaica is where I want to spend my footballing future. I, I, I just think, obviously, everyone had their own little say in what they thought I should do, but the opportunity to be a part of something so unique as the first time that we could possibly qualify and I had an opportunity to be part of that and help. Maybe we would, maybe we wouldn't, but to have the opportunity to be part of it and to be asked to come and be part of it and be wanted and everyone to be saying, yeah, this is the right thing to do. It just felt right. It had to be done. So it didn't really take much, much thought process, really. Um, and like you say, like we said, the rest is history with regards to everything that happened. But regarding the uh, the passport, passport, right? What yeah. is the first thing you do? The first thing you have to you have to get your citizenship, right? Yeah, we have to get citizenship. Or prove your citizenship. Prove is your that... citizenship. So we have to take all the documents from your parents. This is obviously my my, my father. Um, he has to find all his documents, and we have to take that. We have to go down to the embassy. We have to wait around, but it didn't take that, it didn't take that long. It maybe took a maybe a week or two, maybe three weeks max to get everything sorted. We went, we went a few times down there. I remember we had to go down. To the um, but eventually we got it sorted and we got our passports. And you got the passport in like three weeks. I think so. If I remember rightly, it wasn't that long, but. I think I don't know who I don't know if, uh, if the if their powers that be maybe pushed it along or had some influence on how things were there or if we were put to the top of the queue. I don't know. <laughs> okay, and did you guys have to pay or was the fees? I mean, it was it a free process. Did you have to pay or did the JFF like cover those stuff for you to get those documents done? I can't remember. I can't. I can't remember uh, exactly. It's, it's so long ago. I can't remember. But I. I, I think the JFF. Uh, I think sorted it. Sorry, my dog's just trying to get down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I realize he's trying to. He's he's trying to be in the video as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the reason why I'm asking is that we have been having some 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 glitches in terms of players getting their documentation uh, up to recent we heard about a, 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 a demarai gray who there's some issue um why he will not be able and that is a passport delay issue so i'm trying to figure out if it's a very difficult process um or how much the, the individual has to be involved in it or it is more the federation that has to help to expedite it um through the system that that's that's what i wanted to get from you what your process was like i can't remember too much but i remember everyone everyone had to play their part like i said the, the jff had to make the call had to, had to be on the front foot and i remember we had to as soon as we got the call from the jff okay you need to go, go, go on you need to go down there now so we have to leave from where we lived travel to london to uh to, to, to do what asked of us at that time maybe sign some paperwork or check some information but it did take a little bit of time but i think i think the powers that be pushed it along fairly quickly and helped out and uh, with, with the uh, maybe some i don't even know it might be some other people from uh, i don't know pj patterson might have even had, a, had a <laughs> you, you don't know you just do that you got through and that's the important thing so yeah. you come to jamaica though you had to you have to i mean in the summer when 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 everything was out on break you came and you actually lived in jamaica up in cherry gardens at the at the at the team house right so yeah. we can tell by your apartment that you are you know you have a dog there and all of that maybe you had a dog from 1997 we don't know but how easy was that now adjusting to um almost like dorm setting all of these guys different kind of food no you're not just have a choice this is what you have to eat i mean everything probably different from what you're accustomed to in england yeah what was that like for you being 20 years old <laughs> well, I, I definitely put on a little bit of weight because the food was so good morning noon and night eating chef's food but yeah the the, <laughs> the, the accommodation 
the accommodation, everyone knows the story of how the accommodation was and the, and the level that we had to go through. But that that's what I think held us in good stead. And it probably helped us that the house was at the start, didn't have no AC. So it was a quick, <laughs> it, no, seriously, it was probably a quicker way to acclimatize to the, to the, to the heat. Heat, yes. And at the start, I remember we used to go and each time we would go back, we'd win a game or we'd win, we'd win something. We'd go back and then we'd have a sponsor and there'd be AC. And then the next time we'd come back and there'd be more sponsors, we'd have some new beds because then times there, we some players were just sleeping on, on mattresses. Yeah. So, next time, next time we'll have some new, new equipment. So each time it took time, and then gradually, gradually, but that them, better. Times, them times I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have changed them. Being in the house all together, it really uh, bonded us uh, to, to, together. All right, listen. There are so many questions and comments coming in for you, so let me just get some of them now. And and please just bear with me. We wanted to ask some questions to see what kind of advice and and how Dian could help us in terms of understanding some of the issues that we have now. In terms of some of the players i have this one here someone is asking um so i'm going to get to your question just keep putting them up it says hey d d burton is demarai gray a worthy successor do you think he can have the same impact you did to our fortunes this qualifying campaign that's demarai gray of everton who i'm telling you he's 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 not probably not gonna make it because i said that there's some issues with him getting his passport and we're not sure really clear on that yeah, well, he seems to have found his form since he went to Everton. I remember him as a kid coming through at Birmingham, and uh, he was oh. a, a bright prospect. And then he lost his way a little bit. I think he went abroad, but he come back now, and he looks like all all guns blazing uh, for Everton, playing in a not so successful team. I've seen they just sacked the manager Benitez, but um, he's been doing well, so he's going to be uh, a good asset. We can get him on board and get his paperwork. He's a good asset to the to the to the squad. Okay, awesome. Uh, okay, and then someone here is asking, uh, maybe not ten, but they're asking ten players he could make the JFF. He he think he could name that the JFF could look at and how they could help us. Are there any players that you could say, listen, here are a couple that that I've spotted that um they are connected to Jamaica and maybe you know um yeah if they come in they probably could help the team. There, there's so many, but the Jamaica. The Jamaica backward staff and obviously uh, Paul Hall, he, he knows all the players that are available and they're working tirelessly to try to get lots of players with uh, Jamaican background and uh, heritage to be uh, come over and uh, help, 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 help the campaign. There's lots of different players. It's just even at my club and players I've just left, we've got uh, uh, players for uh, uh, West Brom. Young yeah. you're, 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 you're breaking up a little Dion. I don't know if your battery is dying, but we're not hearing, we didn't hear that. Can you just Sorry. repeat? Yeah, yeah, we have a, a, a few young players that were. Can you hear me now? Is that okay? Yeah, we, you're hearing it clearly. Go ahead. West Bromwich Albion that just left the guy called Carl Edwards, really talented young player. Um, also, we have one that's around the first team at the moment. Um, uh, Ryan Tullock, another young one. Called uh, Ray, 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 Ryan, Rayo. So there's a there's there's a few talented ones just from my club alone. But every club has talented Jamaicans all, all over England, all over the US, all over Jamaica even. So it's just about finding the right ones that can yeah. adapt and be part of what's what Paul's trying to build and trying to uh, achieve. Because you have to have the right mindset of coming into what you're coming into and the way it's run. So as long as you have the buy-in and the understanding of what's expected of you, that's got to be the right the right assets as well. And and is there a way that you'd suggest that we do this? Because I know sometimes I hear in, in your team, for example, in 1997, there was a good balance between players who were here locally and players outside of England. It started out with um, you, Paul, um, Robbie Earl, I think was there. Um, the four you started out and then as you got to the World Cup, more players come in. And then after that, we started seeing the integration of more players. How, how do we strike that balance and what is the best way 
the federation can now begin you know looking at those players and getting them involved in the system is it from the youth level or they should wait until they hit the championship or the premier league at how do, what is your direction both. to us in terms of how best the system works it has, it has to be both there has to be the foundations has to be from within and if everything's done right from a lower age within in Jamaica and from a younger age grassroots sorry, sorry. <laughs> from, from you, that, you want you want you want to you, you want to take a break at, 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 oh right, go ahead he wants, wants to go for a walk he's too playful but uh yeah. the foundations have to be right so that the young talent already in Jamaica can have the right right training the right coaching the right facilities to make them just as good as any other facilities outside of Jamaica and then also the players that are coming from uh, abroad it doesn't mean just because they're coming from abroad they're going to be better they have to make sure that they all reach the criteria and just like in England just because we're inviting players doesn't mean that they're stonewall uh, national team players they have to also go through their period of transition and playing and have to earn the right so just because we're calling players it doesn't mean straight away oh they're a national team player they might last one or two games if they don't fit so they have to make sure when they come in that they're earning the right to to, to, to to stay as i found that as i was coming to the end of my time playing for jamaica it started becoming it wasn't a gimme oh yeah deal's gonna be called i had to think am i gonna be in the next squad am i gonna be in the next squad and i had to wait till i got that call to say okay i've, I've made the squad this time it's gonna be a privilege and an honor to be able to be to be uh chosen because only, only 20 what is it 24 26 can be in a squad now yes and with the pool of players that we've got, hundreds of players, the, the 26 have to be right. Right. So I feel what you're saying is that it doesn't matter where they are, it is the best players. And it, it doesn't mean that because you're coming from England, mean that you're better than somebody else. You have to come and prove yourself and then cement yourself in the team. I think that's a very, 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 very good point, Deanne. I, I like what you said also about the grassroots in Jamaica being developed and and you have to have that foundation, that core, like you guys came and saw with a young Ricardo Gardner, the Andy Williams, the Dean, these younger guys who are all there. And you just added to that a good mix. Now, um, our struggle now is that we don't have that grassroots system right now, right? Um, have you ever been approached? Have you ever thought about, you know, um, you know, probably helping uh, or making yourself available to help with the grassroots development of coaching coaching and footballers in in jamaica i've i've always said i'm willing to help whatever whatever part they that's needed anywhere in jamaica from grassroots up to the full national team i'm 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 i'm, I'm here to facilitate and help wherever needed but everyone knows where i am just like with any other coaches if they if they if they get make get the call or we get the call to help of course, we're gonna we're gonna be there to help where we can. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm glad that you love that because you know I'd love to one day see you. You know, working with one of our U teams. You know, just because you're out there working with West Brom to come and um, um, I know it may not at this time be as financially lucrative as it is, but you guys did it before where you sacrifice some stuff. To, to be here be here in 1997 into 1998 the other thing one of the other important things to ask in this how difficult it is when players up to play for jamaica and then go back to england um we we, we know for example there's one player called his name is anthony grant he he came and he played and since he has represented jamaica he has been having a hard time at his club to even like even get in it, it's almost like his choice to come and play for jamaica has worked against him um at his club that's that's a sentiment that's how we feel um did you experience that that coming to represent jamaica it made it even more difficult for you to cement your starting place in your local club and you had to work harder so it was not just a financial sacrifice for you but you could have lost contracts or not been given the opportunity because you chose Jamaica. Yeah, no, over no, no. It. It's never a sacrifice. You, you, you choose to do. You choose to do knowing 
knowing the consequences of maybe anything. You see it now with the African Nations Cup. Clubs threatening their players that you're yeah. not allowed to go. At the end of the day, clubs don't have priority over national teams. So if the national team wants the player, it's up to the player to then choose, yes, I'm going and suffer the consequences of his team. But at the, at the, uh, at the opposite to that, they do pay they do pay his daily wage and he has to go back to that eventually after he's been on international duty. So um, he has to think about it, but Okay, so it was easy for you to, hey, I'm going to pay for Jamaica no matter what. Oh, yeah, but at the same time, at, the, at that time, Jim Smith, as soon as the game was finished, he was like, listen, boys, you better get on that plane and get yourselves back. So there was no, no downtime or resting on our laurels and thinking, oh, we can stay an extra day. We had to straight back and, and, and be ready to play. And I remember... Even later in my career with a, a team that I played for, Brentford, I remember flying back on the fr getting back Friday morning, and the team bus picked me up from the airport because we had a long journey, and the coach was sat next to me and he said, "Dion, you're not going to sleep." He stayed me, kept me awake the whole five hours to the hotel because he knew if I slept on the coach, I probably would have slept for the evening, ready for the game on a Saturday because of the uh, time oh. difference. So he kept me awake the whole journey. Just so I'd have a good night's sleep on the Friday. Whoa, whoa. So it wasn't it it, it was difficult. Um someone is asking Dion, could you name your your top five strikers of all time? Top five? Worldwide? Yeah. Well, let, let's go worldwide first. I mean the question is kind of very open. Uh, and then I will have a follow-up question of um some of the Jamaica uh, like the the players in the Jamaica team. Outside of your, your friend Paul and Fitzroy, who are some of the other players that you really enjoyed playing with? Okay, so the, the, my, my top players of all time would have to be the real number nine, Ronaldo. Had lucky enough, fortunate enough to play with him in the rest of the in world. The world in the yeah. World Eleven. In the World Eleven. How was that for you? Tell us about that. <laughs> that was that was amazing. Again, that was something that very blessed to have been able to uh, be be part of the 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 Jamaica representative that was lucky enough to go and be part of that game. Again, great memories, but obviously he's he's right up there. Batastuta, the goal machine. Um, Messi, you can't look past Messi and now, now Ronaldo. People like Thierry Henry, Ian Wright, top ballers. So, yeah. Oh, Ian Wright, are you an Arsenal fan? No, 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 I'm a Liverpool fan. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool <Just> fans, <laughs> but yeah, close, close to the top to home now. Obviously, Ricardo Gardner is my is my is my my baller. Uh, a very <laughs> talented player, and the the stuff that he did for the national team, and obviously Bolton playing that long for one team in England. Credit to him, really good. Did you guys ever play against each other? Uh, yeah, in it, of course. Yeah? Yeah, what was that like going up against him in the championship? It, it wasn't too bad going up against Bibi because he wasn't against me. The tr the problems came when I had to play against uh, uh, Tap uh, Tapper and Goody for for Hull, or, yeah. or when, or, or when uh, Pepe was at Tranmere. That was I decided to, to play on the wing and tell, told the other striker, to, "Yo, you go and mark that right there." <laughs> Why? Why? Tell us some about that. Because uh, Pepe was going, to, Pepe was going to tackle you hard. He was going to give me some hard tackle. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's 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 good. Well, what about training, though? I mean, I mean, here, how how tough was training here in Jamaica? Um, because it was, it must have been competitive making the starting eleven, right? Um, so how difficult it was every day in training. Every day, every day was tough. Obviously, we had to climatise, we had to get used to the heat. Uh, and obviously, the, the, the time difference once we come over from England. So, lots of lots of uh, hurdles to cross, but then you just have to be ready. Uh, every training session, you have to be on it, ready, fully focused, and just be prepared to do your best. So, yeah. Warren Webster is asking, have you ever thought about putting on a camp for youths in Jamaica? I've always, I've always told, I've already spoke to people in Jamaica. People ask me this a lot of time, but they always talk, but never come through with anything. I always said, uh, I always get 
four or five weeks off every summer when we break up from football. Obviously, I need time with my family to go on holiday. But I always have three or four weeks spare and I'm free to any ever, ever come out and help out and do some coaching or go into uh, the youth football in Jamaica. And people always tell me, yeah, we're going to get you over, Dion. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. But nothing really comes to fruition. So people know where I am. I'm always ha willing to right. help out. Well, well Freddie and a group of us are planning on doing something. Um, okay, so Freddie will probably invite you into that. So, and that's not, you know, Freddie, not into the heap of talking. He's going to get things done. So you can look forward to that. It will be good to have you. Um, we have a next. Um, Ishmael King had asked earlier, is he noted, he said he kind of notices that there's not a lot of a black coaches in the in in the two top in the top in the top tier, which is the Premier League and in the championship in particular, as head coaches, is how difficult it is. I mean, Patrick Vieira is one, Darren Moore was was when West Bram was up, um, Jamaican as well. How difficult it is for uh, black coaches to really ascend to that position in 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 English football. Yeah, of course, it's it's it's, it's tough in any any walks of life. Uh, that's obviously going to maybe be a hindrance or a battle. But how I look at it, if you're good enough, if you're good enough, and you, and you can do the job, just like Patrick's doing now, just like uh, Darren's doing at she Sheffield Wednesday, who's managing that now. And a few other uh, black coaches and managers, they're doing they're doing their stuff and and get getting their props. So long may it continue. Hopefully, many more. Now, now Paul Hall, look at Paul Hall. Paul Hall's gone from the twenty threes at, um, at QPR. QPR, yeah. And now, and he's national coach of Jamaica. Look at that! What a massive achievement that is for Hawley. So everyone's doing their stuff, and good uh, time 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 will come. Yeah, I like where you put that though, because some people think like. Um, because you're at Crystal Palace, because you're at West Brom, to coach like a Jamaica, it's a small thing. But I like what they said, it's a massive, a massive upgrade. And that's how you guys see it. For you to be called to coach a, a Jamaica under 20 or a Jamaica under 17, in, in your own eyes, that's massive. That's a major, major move um, from where you're at right now. But I don't think that that the population in Jamaica fully appreciates that because we see it as probably stepping down, but you oh, guys see it as stepping up to no. a higher level. Yeah. 100%. 100%. 100%. It's a massive step up just because we're doing our thing in the, in the English league, in the championship, to be part of a national team, whatever level, whatever country, it's a big, big step up. Big step up. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Which one of the goals? Which Which goal has you, have you scored for Jamaica? That you said, man, this is the one that that I remember the most. Uh. Or I love the most. Or I think this is the this is the like a dream about this one. If If, if I was thinking about scoring the next goal, this would be the goal I want to score again. Mm, probably the pro the one against probably. The USA in, in Washington because they they just robbed us with a penalty <laughs> that was like so far out the box it was nearer the, the, the oh with Pepe the with Pepe when they get yeah. the penalty against Pepe yeah and he was nearer the nearer the linesman than in the box and they give the penalty so to score that equaliser then and uh, and, and and yeah that, and that was a that, big goal that, that is the one one tie yeah. yeah and then the the second one the one in El Salvador the way I keep looking back on it now and. The ball was going away from the goal. Yeah. It seems to like someone just pushed it into the goal. And I don't know how that happened, but then to see them 40,000 local just go silent. I remember running off down the line and I, I could just like hear a pin drop. And I was running down the line. I could see all these thousands of people, but I couldn't hear one single thing. That was good. Yeah. Um, wh what was it like going to El Salvador and playing a game? How hostile... hostile. How hostile. hostile was it in compare to what you'd experience in England? You'd never before before this is the thing. The national experience compared to playing locally uh, in, in, in England. We'd we'd be woken up, we'd be going to bed at ten o'clock and there'd be a still band and 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 cars and horns and, and cheerleaders outside the hotel trying to keep us awake all night. 
we'd have to move from like the second floor up to the 20th floor to get away from the noise because there'd be thousands of people outside trying to keep us up, keep us up. There'd be, you'd never have in England, I remember one game, I can't remember where it was, if it was Guatemala or somewhere like that. We were training at the, at the army barracks. They put us on the army barracks pitch, which we were pri privileged to play on. The, the army come and drop down the, the helicopter right on the centre circle in the middle of the training <laughs> session the day before the match. I made us all have to walk off and Rene had to say, sorry, training's done. We have to go. So, yeah, they, they would try anything. They would try anything to put you off your game, but we got through. Okay. And um, and then what were the crowds like? I mean, I mean, were you accustomed to seeing like the national stadium being packed, especially coming to the end of those games. I mean, I couldn't believe it when I first went, and and I remember being uh, in the house, and you could see that the the party had already started, like the carnival atmosphere. You try and tell people here in England, though, people would go to England and football in England now. They probably get there earliest one thirty for a three o'clock kickoff, hour hour and a half before max, max maybe hour before the kickoff, and to see people the the stadium fully rammed and speaking to my grandma. I said, Grandma, you coming to the game later? She was like, Neil, what, what do you mean? I'm already at the stadium. It, it must be ready. I said, Grandma, the kickoff's, kickoff's not for another four hours, five hours. She said, yeah, but the party started already. I said, yeah. I said, OK, so when we come, the vibe was already set. And it was it was good to see. And then even the, the atmosphere after the games was just memorable, very memorable. That's that's awesome. Um, Neil says, know that... Uh, Hall is head coach. Do you anticipate that he may call on you in some capacity to help prepare the current team? <laughs> who, who knows? Who knows? Like I said, Hall, Hall knows where I am, and if I'm sure if he thinks that he he needs someone of of my uh, my, 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 my 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 stature, then he, he will call him. If he doesn't, he doesn't. So he he, he knows what he needs and what he wants, and uh, he 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 will, he will do whatever's best he thinks for. Uh, for himself and the national team. So that's not my decision. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Leroy Smart, I'm not surprised. I'm asking the question so that it, it you know, others who don't know um, can understand. Um, um, the question here from Duclan is, that, what is your assessment of Captain Borrell as the GFF president during your time um, with the national team? Captain, Captain Borrell was a... Was the foundation? He was the one that uh, 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 stuck everything together. Uh, him and Mr. Reed, for me, he was the one that always had to facilitate and make things happen and make things work and make things um, run smoothly as they could while the time we were there. And uh, everything fell on Captain's head. So, and obviously with Mr. Reed behind him, helping him out, and the other uh, backroom staff. Obviously, they they were a big part of everything that happened for us. Yeah, yeah. All right. What Warren Webster is asking: How difficult is it to get ahead in English football because you are a visible minority? Just got to keep striving, keep pushing, keep knocking down them walls and and, and knocking down the barriers and, and and never giving up and just keep keep pushing. Yeah. I mean, when when when. After the 1998 World Cup campaign, right? Because you were doing so well, I mean, you went to the World Cup, you also played. Did you, like, how, how, how many opportunities were not open to you in terms of getting transfer and moving? Um, how, 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 how beneficial it was that you went to the World Cup in terms of your own career? And maybe did it increase, like, what your salary now would be? um your value in the market all of those things did anything change for you positively back in england seeing that you had gone to a world cup now you're a world cup player you started in the world cup you scored goals in the campaign i mean how yeah. Did that yeah obviously that's that's the highest level you're playing against the top excellence players in around the world so to be at that level that's only going to make me a better player so when they come back to my my club side it's already made me a better player from experience. Everything I had to go through and experience. So yeah, of course it it helped. I probably would have got uh, new contracts from it, from being able to 
upskill myself and, and, and become a better player from having to work harder and do more things and knowing that the level, that the, the, the national level and the players that you play around, play against in that level of football, that you think, well, actually, I thought I was good. And then when you play against some of these <laughs> other, other players, you're thinking, well, there's another couple of levels that you need to try and get to. So it's definitely made you think and made you try and work harder. So everything uh, falls into place after that, I guess. Yeah, someone has said that, remember that the, um, Dion signed the big contract with Derby the year before. He had yeah. signed a big contract with Derby in 1996. No, no, no. I, I, didn't, I, I was uh, on the verge, I think, I signed for Derby just before the World Cup. Yeah, in '98. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Listen, and many people, right, Dion? One of the biggest disappointments for people was 2002, right? Okay. Because here's the thought: um, the plan was really for Jamaica to qualify for 2002, but it happened in 1998. So we, you know, I think most people are thinking we have a young Ricardo Gardner at that time, still a young Andy mm. Williams, still a young Dion Burton who were instrumental in terms of the team. You had um, even some of the younger players who were brought to the World Cup, though they would not have played. No, we, right? Um, what really happened? Because we felt like 2002, we had better talent. Uh, we had done it before. Just how did it all fall apart? I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. Um, everyone, I would say, Team started to get better as well. We can't put that. Team yeah. started to, like yeah, El uh, Costa Ricas, all, all these other teams that weren't weren't of the level. They upskilled themselves. They started going probably looking for more players around the globe as well. So there's teams that were just getting better as well, and and it's harder. But I can't really put my finger on it myself. But yeah, it was very disappointing that we didn't we didn't uh, qualify. Yeah. Um, Dr. Hira is asking, do you know the nickname that was given to you? Uh, no, what was it? I know there's a few that were the brandished the belt, but... <laughs> Which one do you remember? You remember any of them? Uh, I can't remember at the moment, no. <laughs> All right. I mean, you watch it, the present national team. Who are some of the players that you're very, I mean, you're impressed with? And what are your thoughts on the present national team? National team, lots of talented players. Not so, you know, just saw Nandi's son gone to where is it? Uh, Inter, Inter Miami. Miami. Inter yeah. Miami. What a great move back to the MLS for for him. And you got your guy that's just got I think gone to Moscow. Shamar, Shamar, Shamar Nicholson. Shamar. Yeah. Nicholson. Yeah. I like him a lot. Powerful striker. Lots of players in in the team with uh, ability. Uh, it's just hopefully now um, Hawley can get them singing from the same hymn book and uh, getting a tune out of them. Okay, okay. Um okay. What about what about Antonio? Somebody saying what are your thoughts on Mikel Antonio being in the national setup? Yeah, uh, very, uh, very good player. He has to he has to uh obviously he's hit the ground running. What a great goal he scored. Um yeah. and he's obviously wearing a nice number as well, I see number eight. <laughs> uh, hopefully, hopefully he can do it justice and uh hopefully <laughs> bypass what I did. And, and and kick on because he's a top footballer. Top, he's doing really well at West Ham. I think he's uh, signed a new contract as well. So playing for your national team hasn't hindered him too much because he's just got a new new contract. Yeah, from, contract over there yeah. out in England. So he's doing really well, and I hope that he helps the team uh, as much and more than what what I did. Uh, and that that would be great if he could do that. Yeah. Ian Hebert is asking you how skilled do you think Tapa and Walter are or was. I, I've not seen many, top of it more. I've not seen many more uh, more skillful than the two of them players that you've just named there. Uh, some of the things that Tappy used to do and, and Blackout used to do, I was used to look. I was like, did, did that did that really happen? Did I really just see that? Show me that again, because I, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. And even uh, even as Tappy was uh, getting older, and I remember uh, some of the, some of the things and the, the tricks that he used to do was he could still do them. He could, still, he could still do them uh, after we retired. So, top, 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 top ballers. Yeah, right, awesome. What lies ahead for you, Dion? I mean, what is the plan for you? Five years from now, when we sit and we talk again, um, 
where will Dion be? What's the plan? I'll, I'll, I'll be firmly uh, embedded in my coaching journey. I, I, all I said, I had a 22-year playing career. And uh, I, I, I like to think I've done I all right. I had a, gr a good career and achieved lots of things. And I said to myself, now I want to become a good a coach as I was a professional footballer. And I've given myself a 20-year stint at that. So if I can achieve and do as good as I did as a player, as a coach, well, I can look back and say, I've, I've had a good journey. What about the young Jamaicans listening to you now, those in Jamaica who wants to make it professional or those in England who wants to come and, and play for Jamaica? What is your word of advice? If there were four things or five things you could say to them, what, what are those things so that they can get to the highest level? Well, I just have to copy the things that I, I have to do. And that is make sure you get your education, you work hard, you train hard. One sec. You... Go ahead and do that. No, you, no you problem. Eat, Go ahead and do that. <laughs> you, eat, you eat the right food. You train hard. You listen to your, your, your teachers and, and, uh, and, and your coaches. And uh, my son's just got, got back. But, uh, yeah, work hard. So, Always so, work hard. So, so get your education, You're right? You mean get your education, meaning? Yeah, education firstly. Make sure you, you, you work hard, get your education, and then... You train hard, listen to your coaches, listen to your parents. Well, how were you how were you able to do that in terms of educationally, playing with a, a national team, coming to Jamaica regularly to play, going back to your club? How did you were, were you able to to balance getting your education and still playing football at a professional level? Yeah, well, I, obviously, I finished my education before I become professional, so uh, I, I, I had that already already done and made sure that I ticked all their boxes before I, I went on my journey of my professional football career. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I know you have, I know you have to run because I know we have limited time, but there are so many persons in the comment section. I want you to, I want to give you an opportunity because I didn't get to bring up all the questions that they they have there are many many questions and comments i mean many of them talking about how you know just how important you were um to that 1998 campaign and your contribution to that campaign and to jamaica football uh, we want to say thank you to you again because i mean if it wasn't for those goals i know it's teamwork makes the dream work but the goals were important um, so thank you for all of that. And also, it is so good, right, that you still have a heart to to, to reinvest in, in the football. And I hope the powers that be and people out there can, can contact you and see how you can help, especially at the grassroots level with football. But go ahead, I mean, and talk to the persons who are, uh, I think we have 149 persons watching the live stream right now. So go ahead and... Um, I don't know what you want to say to them, <laughs> but go ahead and talk with them. Someone's on? Who's on? Uh, no, man, it's your time. Uh, no, they are watching you. All of these persons in the comment section here watching you, so go ahead and just talk to them. And say what? I've just spoke for an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, because we're closing now, so I don't know if you want to say thank you, anything to them. Oh, man. Thanks, thanks, thanks for listening, To, to greet guys. all the Jamaican, thanks, all the Jamaican fans out here. Thanks for listening. Obviously, keep uh, keep going out supporting the team. I know it's been hard with uh, with the situation we've come across in the last eighteen months, but you know, hopefully, the stadium can get back to the full capacity uh, it's soon. And just go out there and support the team like like you guys did, or your parents did, or your grandparents did when I was playing all them years ago. And <laughs> you're like the twelfth man, and, and and the team needs you. Yeah, man. Listen, Dion, all the best. Thank you so, so much. I know your son just came in. You have to walk the dog. You have to come up with your match plans and things. Hey, when is he coming to play for Jamaica? Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. He's, he's the, he, he plays for West Bromwich Albion as well, under the under 18. So he, he's he, under 18. So, so is he going to come up for the under 20s or I mean, under 20s? And, he, yes. and, he's, and he's bigger than me. Yeah, bring him. What position he plays? He's a big boy. He's a big boy. Hey, what what position he plays? He's a defender. Centre back. Centre back. Centre back. Yeah. And he's he's seventeen. 
16. Six foot 16. two. Six foot two center 16, back. Yeah. All right, see, you, you, you're ready to play for Jamaica? Are you ready to play for Jamaica? We, we'll get you called up right now. I think one of his friends, right? They just, one of my friends is training. One of his friends has just gone out, I think, centre back. Center back to train. I think he saw a picture of him before Paul Hall uh, a few days ago. I think, what team did he play for? Middlesbrough? Middlesbrough, yeah. Middlesbrough or something, yeah. But yeah, who knows? In the future, yeah. Okay, so so all right, so he wants to all right. That's what's his name, Dion? Dion Dion Burton Jr. Casey Dion. Casey Dion. Yeah, Casey Dion Burton. Casey Dion Burton. So all right, so he's 16, 6. How good is he? Could he's he stop good. you? Could he stop uh, you if you're if, if, could could he stop you? I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe when he's older, who knows? <laughs> All right, then. Well, have to be there. Yeah, man. It's been a yeah, pleasure, man. guys. Yeah, man. Bless up, Dion. I will talk. All right. Thank you Definitely. for coming on. Yeah, man. Thank Enjoy you. the rest Thank of your day. And you. God bless. All right, then. Bless this. Well, there you go, people. Um, Dion Burton. Right? Um, so we look forward to his son coming to represent Jamaica. I hope you enjoyed, you know, the conversation. So check out his son, Casey, Dion Burton, right? Um, that's that's one more name. We tried to make all the connections and get them do down, you know what I mean? So people, thank you again. Please make sure you hit the like button. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please make sure that you do so, right? I my apologies for not taking all the questions you know it's different time zone there's a five hour difference um right now and we we had a tight schedule working with in terms of time and so that's why we had to take this pass it's not long as the other interviews but i really hope that you you would have heard something to inspire you to encourage you again thank you so 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 much and again, my apologies. It would have been very difficult to get all the questions and all the comments in. I hope I did it justice. And you 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 heard um you, you heard enough, right? And um, but we're going to have him on again. There's a plan to have him on um in a different kind of show with more reggae boys, and that could be coming up at the end of this month. So um you will you will be able to interact with them um when they are doing their show on the platform by themselves all right so again i really want to i really want to thank you um for your time for being here uh really enjoyed your company all right we have a next big interview planned for today with wendell Donswell, who is in um peru with the national team um he is so please remember we need to call out these names when he come on when he comes on right all of these names the casey dean burton kiddo taylor hart all of these names because he is the technical director so we'll be talking to him again thank you so so much have a blessed day we're gonna see if we can watch some jpl so we can do our jpl show Schoolboy football going on as well. Edwin Allen is in the finals of the Ben Francis Cup and Stets and Froome are going to be playing. Um, bless up. Keep staying tuned to I Am Sure Sports. Want to say big up to our sponsors. The sponsors for this video, Prestige Finance. Lending a hand when you need it most. You can call them at 876-884-738. 9-0. Want to also big up our second sponsors. We have two sponsors for this video. The other sponsor is none other than launchlegacy.com. Check out Launch Legacy. Right. Launch Legacy will help you um, with financial products for your future, for investment and things. So please check them out. Launch Legacy. Check out them. Launch Legacy. Let me say it again. Launch legacy launch legacy that's patrick reed he's over there doing his thing so please make sure you check them out and let me just listen in fact here's what i'm going to do let me give you share something with you from 
prestige, finance, and then I'll let you hear from Launch Legacy. There you go. So check out Prestige Finance and Launch Legacy. Handle Risk, Seek Legacy. Visit them at launchlegacy.com or call 1-647-989-0792. We are scheduled to interview Mr. Wendell Donswell at 9.30, but there is a time difference apparently between Jamaica and Peru. So it's 5.30, but it may be an hour later, which is 6.30, so stay tuned for that have a wonderful wonderful rest of the day and please be safe all right this is my name's man representing for i am sure sports we're over and